morning and welcome to High Point Church Online. I'm Catherine. And I'm KP. Yes, and we are so excited to be with you this morning. Special welcome to anyone watching this morning for the first time. We are so glad you're here and hope to have you again. Yes. So welcome. how have you been? I have been excellent. I've not, I've not seen her in a minute. I've, so. I've been traveling, been a bit okay. safely, tra traveling safely, safely but traveling. Um, yes, I'm, I'm back. Where have you been? I went to LA, dun, 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 yeah, and uh, Seattle for a few weeks. Very cool. Yes, but I am so happy to be back in the South. Yes, yes. that's great. I mean, I've traveled from my couch to my bed upstairs, and it's been really amazing. Yeah. I've really enjoyed it. Nice. Nice. So Seattle's no big deal. Wait, way to bring in 2021. <laughs> yes. And what's awesome is with your traveling, you're still able to watch our messages and be yes. tuned in. So what have you thought about great. it so far? It's been fantastic. I actually, my sister and I are doing a study on God's names on our own. Oh, and wow. then when I was watching the sermons and I was like, oh my gosh, this, this brings it to life even more. That's so really cool. it's been perfect. Nice. Yes. Yes. So today we are so excited to have Pastor Jason speaking this morning. He'll be wrapping up the Awesome God series. It's been such a great time, like Katie said, learning about just the different names of God, who he is, his character, and being able to just dive into that. So we're going to finish that up today. So excited to hear from Pastor Jason. We also have a special announcement from Pastor Andy. He's going to be hopping on at the end of the message, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss that. But before we get started, let's go ahead and pray together, and then we'll have a time of worship. Okay? All right. Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. God, I thank you for your goodness, for your greatness. God, I thank you that you are a God who does reveal yourself to us, your children. I pray that you are with us during this time as we learn more about who you are, and we grow deeper in our understanding of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Morning, High Point Church. So good to be here with you today. I get the honor uh, to really wrap up this five-part series that we have on Awesome God. I don't know about you, but this has been um, a great series to just dive into the greatness and the, the, the amazingness of our God. Um, I want to start off today by asking you this. Think about a time you encounter God in, in, a, in a kind of profound way. It can set you on a new direction. It can, it can stir your spirit and encourage you to do things you never thought you can do. When I think about my life, I can pick out moments throughout my life over and over and over again where God has shown up and done something that's significant. And it's changed the way that I, I relate to him and the way that I see him. When... Um, I was 17. That was the moment where the f- it was the first time that I really experienced the love of Christ and the goodness of God. And that was the moment where I, I said, okay, God is real and he loves me. And it is time that I make the decision to follow him for the rest of my life. No matter what profession I'm in, At that time, I thought I was going into sports medicine. No matter what I do with my life, I am going to be a person who follows him and to the best of my my ability, glorifies him. I'd grown up in church. I, I had heard all the messages. I knew about God. But that was the moment where God showed up and I encountered him in a in a life changing, redemptive way. In college, we spent the, the, there was a group of us, I experienced God in community, and there was a group of us that would pray and we'd fast. Every week, we'd put one day aside to pray and fast that God would move on our college campus, that he would touch people's lives and that, that he would use us, you know, just some young college students, use us to make a difference um, on that campus. And over the, the four years there, we saw God touch lives a campus ministry was birthed. And God began to to reveal himself to me that he is a God who is intimate. He is a God who works through us and and works in me. This was was life-changing. During this time, we would go on mission trips. And when you're on a mission trip, often God will call you to take huge steps of faith outside of your comfort zone. And I, ex- I, I learned that when I it was willing to almost blindly obey God, that he would show up in that moment. I re- recognized that he is my provider. You know, he, 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 he's my provider financially. Yes, I trust him for, for my future. But he's also my, my provider when I take a big step of faith. He will meet me in that moment. One mission trip, um, I experienced God in a whole new way. I had an opportunity to pray for, for a person who was physically disabled. And I saw God begin to heal him and him to, to, to just, as we prayed as a group, this man began to gain strength in his body. And we saw God in the moment miraculously move in his life. Another time later on, Amy was pregnant with Ava, and we got a diagnosis that she might not make it. This was, at first, I was just overwhelmed, and I didn't know what to do. And, it, and we had to wait two weeks, kind of, for more tests and the more diagnosis and, and to, to figure out what was going on. And during that time, um, I got heaps of people to pray, but I, I spent... In, Amy as well. Time just prostrate before God, calling out to him, asking him to move on our behalf. And when I was doing that, God gave me a a supernatural peace. And I understood God as a God of peace. 
in a whole new way. I, I could have never understood that by just reading the scriptures. Could have never understood that by just having somebody tell me about their experiences. I understood that because I experienced the peace of God in a moment of great anxiety. I could go through time and time again in Australia planting a church where I experienced God in, in incredible, joyous ways, and I experienced God in difficult circumstances. And I'm thankful for all of those because God revealed himself to me, and I got to have the privilege of entering into a deeper relationship with him as a result of that. In this series, we've been examining the awesomeness of God through the encounters of men and women in the scripture. In each of these instances, there has been a particular name of God that has been revealed through their encounter and understanding of who God is. Our hope is that through this series, you have gained a deeper understanding of God's greatness, of his love, an understanding that he is for you and that he has called you into this incredible mission with him and that it will lead us all to a deeper relationship and for us to worship him. That has been our heart. Today, hearing these, these stories from over the past weeks, maybe you've gained a deeper understanding of God. And you've realized that God is good. But hearing these stories is not enough. You have to encounter God for yourself. Hearing stories are great. Reading the scripture is essential. But we experience God and understand him in a, in a, in a much deeper and revelatory way when we encounter him. So I'm going to ask you to do three things today at the end of, of this sermon. Um, and in response to talking about what we are going to talk about today, the life of, of Jacob. But in advance, I'm going to tell you what two of those things are. And I'm going to hold one back just for a little suspense. But the first thing I want you to think about in response to this series is I want you to think about in your life, when have you encountered God? When has he shown up maybe in a difficult circumstance? Or has he moved in your life where you have seen him in a different light? Or... Maybe it's deepened your understanding of who he is. Think about those things. It's so important. Because I, I will guarantee you, if you are watching this online with, with us today, then there has been a time where God has shown up in your life. Maybe you don't, maybe you're not sold out yet. Maybe, you know, you're still checking out what Christianity is all about. But I'll tell you, he's shown up in your life. And that he loves you and that he is for you. Go ahead, take a moment over this week and think about times where God has shown up in your life and you've encountered him in a new way. The second thing I want you to do is, in response to this, is to call out to God. Say, God, show me your goodness. Show, show me your peace. I want to experience you this week in a profound way, in a new way. I want to walk with you closer than I am now. Over this week, I want to go through the, the names of, of God that, that we have encountered. First one was Jehovah, which is basically a proclamation. It's saying, my Lord. That's what Jehovah means, my Lord. It's talking about God's self-existence. God's presence and him moving in our lives and putting us on his greater mission. The second week was Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, which is my peace. That you experience God's peace in a supernatural way. And you call out to him as Jehovah, God of peace. The third week, which maybe has been my favorite, was El Roy. The Lord who sees. What an incredible message by Pastor Andy that was, that he sees us, that he's moving in our lives, that he's for us. In the 
the big, big idea is that he brings us into a relationship with him and redeems us. That God is active in our lives. How good is that? Last week, we talked about Jehovah Jireh, that God is our provider, that in our deepest need, God shows up. When, when we ha- don't know what to do, there God is. And we, we examined that not only does he meet us day in and day out in our deepest needs, but he has provided our ultimate need, that, that Jesus was the perfect lamb of God, and that in him we find life and redemption, and that God has provided for, for, for us to be able to know him and to walk with him and have a relationship with him. Today we're going to talk about God Almighty, El Shaddai. Ephesians 2.10 says this, it's one of my favorite scriptures. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Before we were even created, God knew us and he purposed for us to walk in good works. I am thankful for that. This week, we're going to look at the life of Jacob. And we're going, to, we're going to look at a couple of his encounters where he experienced God in this way. And God revealed himself to Jacob as God Almighty. Now, Jacob was the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham. We'll get to why that's significant in a minute. He was known, if you remember this story, as the man who wrestled with God and came out on the other side of that with a blessing. He was also known as the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Those were his 12 12 sons. It's from his lineage, through his son Judah, that Jesus came about and the redemption of all men. That that, That through his line, salvation and redemption came. You might remember... Earlier in this series, with Exodus 15, God's talking to Moses, and he reveals himself to Moses. And what he says is, he says, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. Why is this so important? Why is God identifying himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, it's because God had made a covenant with them. It's called the Abrahamic covenant. It's a covenant saying that he is going to make Abraham, from Abraham, a great nation. That his children and descendants are going to be as many as the stars in the sky. He says it to Isaac that it's going to be as many as the the sand on the beach. And he goes on to say, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a great nation. And in that, you are going to be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. He repeats this multiple times to all of them, and confirms this in a different way. We're going to look at that today as we study the life of Jacob. You know, when you step back and you look at the big picture of God's promises to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and what he does in their lives, when you just see how he fulfills this incredible promise to make them a great nation, and that eventually this promise is completely fulfilled or revealed in in Jesus, where out of one of the sons of Isaac, Judah, comes Jesus, who redeems the world and offers salvation to everybody who will follow him and be with him. And that promise continues in us through the words of of Jesus in the Great Commission. that He calls us now to continue to be a blessing to the nations and to carry the gospel um, throughout the world. When you step back, you can see God's faithfulness. You can see his blessing. You can see how he shows up as Elroy, that he's the God who sees, and he's the God who, 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 who can move in miraculous ways. You see him as, as God Almighty. You see him as the provider. But here's the thing. 
It's great to look from that view. But as we've seen over these weeks, as you begin to drill down and you look at their individual lives, there's a lot of mess. It gets messy. I don't know about you, but if somebody begins to examine my life and looks at the details of my life throughout my life, there would be a lot of mess. There is a lot of mess. There's so many things I don't want anybody to see. And I'm sure that's true for, for you who are listening. Jacob's life was no exception. There was a lot of mess. And it started from right in the beginning. It says that in his mother's womb, he was a twin, in his mother's womb, that he and his brother were fighting. And it was during this time that his mom got this incredible vision from God that the youngest son would become this great nation and would lead the family and the older son. And the, during the birth, the Esau, the, Jacob's twin, as he was being birthed, don't, don't get too visual on this, <laughs> um, Jacob reached up and grabbed the heel and as he was coming out. And the, that is how he became known as Jacob, which his name is heel grabber. But also Jacob is, is a Hebrew idiom for deceiver as well. And the, the, these two things, the prophecy that was on his life from when he was in his mom's womb and his name as heel grabber, one who strives and deceiver, play out, wrestle throughout his life. We're going to pick, the, pick up on this in Genesis 28, where Jacob deceives his father with the help of his mother and steals his brother's blessing. This is a pivotal moment in the life of Jacob and the, what proceeds after that. Genesis 28.10, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran, basically went north. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and he lay down to go to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the, on the earth and reaching to the top of heaven. And the angels of God were descending up and down. There above it stood the Lord. And this is what the Lord said. I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham and Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are laying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. Basically, he's giving everything he promised to Isaac and to Abraham, now to Jacob. Goes on to say, all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and through your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. So that's a promise, that he'll, he'll be with him when he goes, and he'll bring him back to the land that he's now on. I will, I will not leave you until I have fulfilled this promise. So here's Jacob. He has this incredible encounter with God. Shortly after he had deceived his brother and his, his dad and mother sent him on, on his way. Jacob believed in God. He had heard about God all his life. He had heard the stories of Abraham. He had heard the encounters that Isaac had. He believed that God was real. Before he left, Isaac, his dad, sat him down and proclaimed this blessing on him. He said, may God Almighty, there it is, may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your number until you become a community of peoples. He was basically saying, what's mine, I'm now, my blessing, I'm now giving to you. And he sends him out to go find his wife. Yet, we see that Jacob, 
even though he knew about God, even though his father blessed him and encouraged him to, to seek after God, he didn't know him in a personal way. And he didn't trust him to show up on his behalf. There is an obedience in Jacob. Jacob obeyed what the Lord asked him to do. But there wasn't a surrender and an understanding of God's goodness. He understood that God was great and that God does these, these great things for his, his dad and for his grandfather, but he had never experienced him in this way and surrendered his life to him. We all struggle with this. We all struggle with completely surrendering our lives, not just out of obedience because we should do this and this is what I'm supposed to do, but a, but a heart surrender and obedience that comes from a love of God. We've been in a men's Bible study going through, through a book called Not a Fan, and it, it gets into um, the, this concept that we need to be followers of Christ all in and not just fans of God who, you know, sit and cheer him on. I know, gosh, it's been so convicting because even though this is what I do, I am in ministry. I have pledged my life to follow God when I was 17. I still struggle sitting on the sidelines sometimes and just being a fan. But God calls us into a relationship with him. He calls us into an encounter with him. And we have to lean into him and choose, hey, I am not just a fan. I am a follower. I completely surrender my life to God. Now, Jacob still struggled with this. Even though he encountered God in such a powerful way, he still struggled with completely trusting God. And we see this in the next section of his life. He spends 20 years serving a man named Laban, who is his father-in-law. And 14 of those years, it was hard labor, and he was not paid. He was working for the privilege of marrying his daughter. And during that time, he had many children. He had, during that time, he had 11 sons, and one more will be born. The 12 tribes of Israel. And God moved, and God blessed him. Just as God promised, he said, I will be with you during this time. God's favor with, was with him. And Laban saw that. Laban saw the blessing of God on Jacob's life. And it came to a moment where Jacob, it was time for Jacob to go, to leave. He'd served him for all this time. And he, God had blessed Jacob and given him also great wealth. And he's about to go. And instead of talking with Laban and saying, okay, Laban, this is what you have promised. We, I'm going to take my children, my grandchildren, all that God has given me, and we're going to go back to our, our family. We're going to go back to, to Isaac. Instead of doing that, Jacob again deceives and leaves in the dead of night, takes all of Laban's grandchildren and his daughters and servants, and tries to sneak away. Why? Because he didn't completely trust God in this moment, that Laban would do right by him. Just like early on in his life, he didn't trust that God's prophecy for his life would come, come about. He, in, instead of trusting God, he took it in his own hands and used deception to get what he wanted. Now, this was Jacob's go-to. This is what he fell back on, deceiving and manipulating and getting what he wanted through his own abilities. What about you? When you're in a tough spot, when you're stressed, when, you when you're doubting God, what do you go towards? You know, what what's your default position? When you're in a tough spot, when you're worried, are you tempted to stretch the truth? What's your go-to? Are you tempted to make yourself look better than you really are? Or do you lean into God and trust what he's doing and that he has a plan 
and that he's going to move in your life. What's the way that you cope with stress? We all do it a little differently. I'm not, not sure what it is exactly for you. But we all, in these moments of difficulty, of stress, of tension, we are all pulled back to a, a ungodly nature to, to take things, control of things into our own hands. And we're tempted to make these decisions outside of, of God's will and God's promises. This is what Jacob did multiple times. But in this next section, we're going to see how this changes. That Jacob, after 20 years of, of labor, still hadn't learned his lesson. De deceived to get his way. But God is still pursuing him because he promised he would not leave him or forsake him. Just like he's promised us. God will not leave you or forsake you. He enters into our mess. He calls us out of it to follow him. And he redeems us from ourself. And he does that for, for Jacob in this next section of the story. Picks up in Genesis 35. God calls Jacob back to Bethel. He brings his whole family. This is a, a moment where God is going to do something significant in his life. For the second time, God changes his name from Jacob to Isaac. The first time, it was almost like a promise. And this time, it, 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 it's a fulfillment of that promise, that he has now become what is known as Israel, the, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. This is a significant moment. And what God does is he reveals himself in a, in a new way. He reveals himself as God Almighty. Because Jacob now is able to step back and take a look at what God has done, the fulfillment of his promise to him, that he would be a great nation and that he would be a blessing to the nations around him. He could look back over the last 20 years, even though there was struggle, it was difficult, there was contention sometimes, he can look back and see God's blessing and his providence and the way he's moved in his life. I know when we take a step back, as I talked about earlier, when we take a step back and look at what God has done in our life, we could see moments in our life where he's moved, where he's called us, where he's drawn us near to him. Maybe where he's shown up and revealed a new aspect of him. Because we can never explore the goodness of God. We can never explore the awesomeness of God. There's always more to, to, to lean into. There's always more to know. Like I said earlier, I wanted to leave you with three things. The first thing I want to leave you with is I want to ask you this week, think about your life. Think about the times where God has shown up in your life, the encounters you've had with him. And ask yourself, God, what were you revealing to me during that time? How, what did you reveal about me? What did you reveal about you? And how should I respond to that? How should my life be different? And how should I embrace who you are more? I think this is so important to be able to look back and, and see how God has moved in our life and what he's done. Second thing is right now, not just living in the past, but right now, we need to call out to God and say, God, I need you more than ever. I'm asking you to reveal yourself to me this week. Show up. And, and this might be a moment where you tell God, I, I'm, I'm anxious, or I'm having these troubles, or I'm struggling with this. God, I need you in this particular area of my life to show up. I need an encounter with you. I'm, I'm asking you, call out to God. A invite him in to reveal himself to you. And then the third thing, I want us to recognize that God has called you and he's called me to be a blessing to those around us. Just as he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that from them, the nations would be blessed, we now continue that on to bless our neighbors, and everybody who we encounter. This is a great place to start. 
Ask God today to reveal himself to you in a new way, to bless you, and ask him to use you to be a blessing to those around you. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we recognize that you are God Almighty, that you have made a way for us to know you, to walk with you, and to join you in your great mission to be a blessing to all those around us. I want to speak a blessing on you as we go. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he fill you with wisdom and give you favor. May you be a blessing to your neighbors and to all the people you encounter this week. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for an incredible message on our almighty God. I just want to remind you of this, uh, that, that we serve a God that is, in fact, mighty. He has blessed you. He has blessed me. He's blessed our church, and he's blessed us to be a blessing. And uh, it's our privilege uh, not only to worship him, but to literally be the blessing that he's called us to be. Uh, with that, we, we, we're, we've, we're bringing a close to the series that we're in, but I have a special announcement uh, for us this morning. Um, as you very well know, if you've been watching and participating with High Point Online, uh, we are coming up literally on just about a year of having done this due to the pandemic and coronavirus. I know it's hard to believe uh, that it has been almost a year. We've had monthly services uh, when we can and when we could uh, outdoors uh, because we wanted to be a blessing to you. Even as, as, following what Pastor Jason mentioned, God has blessed us and we want to continue being a blessing. And so we know that church is important and gathering to, for worship is important. Um, but one of the things that we have done uh, is we've stayed primarily virtual uh, because we in, in our estimation, we felt like it was the best thing to do uh, for our community, for you, and for our families. Uh, many of you are caring uh, for loved ones, and so we, we wanted to make sure that we created an environment where people could continue to worship safely online um, and do so uh, from the comfort of their homes. That being said, uh, we are getting closer and closer to what we call our welcome back opportunities. So we've put together a welcome back plan. There are not super hard dates on it. There are some data that we're looking at, but you need to know we've been working hard. We've been working with our local officials. We've been working with the mayor's office and those who work literally in this, uh, in this industry. Um, and we've put together what we believe is a pretty great plan. And it's too exhaustive for you to, to hear all the details right here and right now. But if you text HP Info to 97000, you'll see a, a, on the little link tree, there's a little piece there called the Welcome Back Plan. And we want you to click on it, and you can literally uh, get all the information on how we're going to begin phasing back in uh, to, to gathering together for worship. Uh, it's important for you. It's important for us. And uh, we think we've put together a great plan uh, for High Point to continue worshiping and to be a blessing at our community at the same time. So you can get all that information by texting HP Info to 97000. You can also find it in the High Point newsletter that goes out every single week. You'll see links to it also in social media. You can go to our website and also find it there. We are making it available for you every place you can find it. Check it out. See what's happening. Be in the know. We can't wait to worship with you soon. Love you. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for that announcement. I cannot wait for what's in the store. Yes. Speaking of what's in store, uh, we have our life group starting this week. Yay! Yes. Um, I love life groups. Are you in a life group? I am in a life group. <gasps> Which one? I am in the Young Professionals. Okay. Um, and I'm also in the Jude study on Wednesday night. Oh, so you can be in more yes. than one. I love that. Yes. Okay, so what about those do you love or have you experienced? Uh, 
I feel like a simpler question would be, what don't I love? Oh, okay. Um, Fine. What don't you love? <laughs> Just kidding. Don't tell me what you don't love. <laughs> uh, gosh, the friendships that have grown yeah. from the life group. Um, and since I live far, now that it's really actually good. digital, I get to see my friends every week nice. and catch up and actually see how they're I doing. And, that. oh, yeah, actually learning more about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, when? What about you? I am also in a life group. I'm doing the women's study. We actually have two of those. But yeah, working through the book of Jude with some amazing women. Same thing. I love connecting. I love the fact that because it is digital, no matter where we live in this Mm -hmm. crazy city, we actually have someone in ours that's living in Oklahoma that is joining our group. It's a friend of a friend's. And so if you know anyone to get plugged in, don't let the location hinder you. It's a great way to be connected. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So life groups this week, text HBINFO to 97000. You'll see all the options and really get yourself plugged in. Love it. That's all we have. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm just going to stop looking at the viewfinder. I know it's hard. I go back and (laughs) (laughs) See you guys next week. Thanks. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Mm. I gotta do my happy dance. Transitions are awkward. Though. I know, but I make them awkward. So awkward. <laughs> I'm like speaking of, but <laughs> that's true. That's I'm a I'm a natural dork, so it works. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Andy, for that announcement. I forgot what I was saying. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Andy. Can't wait for what's in store. We'll do that. Okay. Did, did you go to like theater camp or something in there? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm a normal human being. Red leather. leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. That's not easy. Exactly. All right, good. Just get warmed up. Yeah, just keep just, get, just get warmed up. Just loosen up a little bit. All right. Okay, I know where I'm going. I need to know where I'm going. I need more of that, see? <laughs> you need to channel more Amy. You're being less bad. Good job. Being less bad. Amy wrote that this these bullet points this morning, so <laughs> she's like, why don't you put this in here? I'm like, okay. <laughs>